City, and I'd like to thank Jim Marlett, Carol Cumberland, and Tom Ewert for serving on that committee. Uh, we have uh, four officers and two, I'm sorry, three officers and two board members uh, that have agreed to serve. Um, Vice President Cheryl Miller, Treasurer Kevin Grunewig, Secretary is a, a repeat Barbara uh, Gobert, uh, board members returning for his second three year term is Mark Nolan and Jennifer Bruy. Uh, the election will be on the meeting uh, in May. So the May meeting will be the election of those officers. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kevin to introduce tonight's program. Thank you. All right, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I don't think I have too much news to report, although I was going to mention, I've kind of been mentioning the other folks, and I posted something about it uh, before, but I was out in the park last weekend. And the, uh, I heard three woodcocks, saw a couple of them flying uh, up in the park. So uh, now is a good time to go see the species, and they seem to be pretty reliable here in Chisholm Creek Park. So for those who are interested, maybe even tonight if we uh, finish up before it gets too dark. Okay, well, uh, our speaker tonight is John Gallagher. Uh, he's with the Dillon Nature Center uh, with the Hutchinson Recreation Commission. And uh, he's been there since uh, 2018. And so previously he was the executive direct director for the uh, Nature and Raptor Center at Pueblo and then has been kind of all over the place, Colorado, Utah, Indiana, Wyoming, California, and New York. So uh, he's, been, he's been around. Um, he uh, studied science education at the Teton Science School's graduate program and earned his BS in biology from Prescott College. And he's gonna to talk to us tonight about your brain on nature. So, John, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so good evening. Uh, my name is John Gallagher, and I'm with the Dillon H Center up in Hutch. Uh, anybody been there? Visited? Yeah, very good. Um, I don't know if folks know, but it's part of uh, the Hutchinson Recreation Commission. Um, and, uh, you know, we do a lot of quality of life type opportunities uh, that we provide Hutchinson, uh, a lot of healthy wellness activities. And um, that's kind of where I got my interest uh, in this topic. But, you know, before I start on this presentation, um, I need to share with you two important things. Uh, and this first one, you're not going to believe me, uh, but I promise you this really happened. Um, so this presentation has been on my mind for the past couple of days. Uh, so last night I had a dream about this presentation, and maybe you've had a similar type of dream. Um, uh, the, so I'm in the audience, getting, in that, getting introduced, and I get up to the stage, and I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> um, I swore I had pants on earlier, but, you know, it's, it's that kind of a dream. And um, uh, somebody, you know, the crowd is laughing at me and catcalling and things like that. Uh, and somebody brings me my pants and I put my pants on. Uh, and as I'm buckling up, I lean into the microphone and I say, uh, if this isn't going well later, they're coming back off. <laughs> and I got a great laugh for that. My dream crowd really laughed at that, so thank you for laughing at that. And uh, I was really proud of my subconscious self for turning that around, because um, that could have been a real nightmare. Uh, so hopefully my awake self uh, is, is equally as good for you. Um, and the other thing, uh, I'm going to be talking about the healthy benefits of nature for your brain and your body. And I'm asking you to sit inside to do that looking at a screen um, that I'm going to be complaining about that we need to have less screen time. So if you want to go out and find that woodcock, 
<laughs> I'm fine with that. If you just want to go out, I mean, the benefits of spending the 30 minutes, 45 minutes that I'm going to be up here talking outside is way, you know, way going to out, outlast what you're going to learn from me. So, nobody? <laughs> All right. But, you know, if you change your mind, I will not be offended if you get up and, and step out. Um, so, uh, I'm not a mental health professional. I am not a uh, health professional in any way. I'm just a, a guy who's been, uh, has spent a career sharing nature with folks, um, trying to connect people with nature for, for many years, uh, promoting nature appreciation, uh, promoting uh, nature stewardship, um, and uh, that's, that's been the bulk of my career, uh, but lately I started a shift, I think, and um, you know, you, you want to feel like you're doing something important, and I felt that, you know, connecting people to nature and, and promoting stewardship has been a, a, a good goal. Uh, but now I am kind of shifting. Now that there's becoming more evidence, more science, uh, more studies showing that spending time in nature is, is really good for you. And, um, uh, and now I feel that's, that might be the thing I need to be doing is getting people out as, as much as possible uh, and, and, and getting those healthy benefits. Um, so while we sit inside and talk about this thing, I want to share with you a cartoon that uh, I find is kind of uh, important um, recently. So I'll let you read that. <laughs> so, throughout my career, uh, you know, getting people outdoors hasn't been that difficult, but it's, it's becoming more and more difficult. And it's not just children who are spending a lot of time in front of their screens with video games, phones, uh, television, things like that. Um, it's, it's adults as well. Um, and uh, in uh, 2005, maybe you folks have seen this book. Uh, this book is, has been pretty important to folks like me. Um, Last Child in the Woods by uh, Richard Liu, who's a journalist from San Diego. In 2005, he released this book, uh, which was painstakingly researched to look at uh, the health effects of kids not getting outdoors. Uh, and what, what are the repercussions of spending less time in the outdoors because now they're send, spending so much time screens um, and the, the book like I said was painstakingly researched there's a lot of charts and graphs with all the details on what's happening to our kids because of this and uh, he coined the term uh, nature deficit disorder um, and this phenomenon has led to uh, you know a rise in attention disorders ADHD uh, obesity, depression, lack of empathy, uh, dwindling knowledge of ecological literacy, uh, declining stewardship of the natural world. Um, and until he put this book together, folks had noticed these things but hadn't put it together that it's all the screen time and the lack of time out in nature that is kind of leading to this. Um, and, uh, but it's not just a kid problem, it's an everybody problem. Uh, in the U.S., uh, adults uh, average about 10 hours in front of a screen. And that's, you know, your phone, your computer, your television. Um, so it's, it's an everybody problem. Technology, you know, technology is great. We can do so many things. People at home can watch this uh, presentation. Um, but, uh, but 10 hours is a lot. And we're sacrificing time in nature to, to be doing that. And so in 2011, uh, Lou again uh, uh, brought out another book that is showing the nature deficit disorder in adults and how it's affecting adults. Um, and really uh, showing that, you know, our, our uh, tie to technology has prevented us from you know, 
spending time in nature and, uh, and, and losing out on those benefits. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, a, this is uh, in addition to talking about that, it's kind of a guidebook. Here are some ways we can uh, bring back nature into our lives. Now, I know I'm, this group, I'm preaching to the choir. I know this. Um, I'm sure everybody in this room knows what it's like to, to spend time outdoors, to spend time in your garden, how relaxing and, and stress relieving that is, to spend time out on the trails here, to be out looking for, okay, bird watching is not always stress free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, but like you, I just love watching birds and watching their behaviors and things like that. And that uh, really calms me. Um, uh, but, but not everybody feels that way. And there are a lot of folks that hardly spend any time outside. And um, here's what I think. So he, he has a, like a road map on how we can get back outside. Uh, and I'll be honest, I haven't read the whole thing. His books are not real page turners, um, <laughs> but it has a lot of important information. But here's what I think. I think, uh, are you guys familiar with the, um, the app Yelp? Uh, when you go to a town to visit on a trip, uh, Yelp is a good resource to find you know, your basic needs, your restaurants, where you find food, your hotels, where you can find shelter, um, activities, you know, cultural activities, where's, where are the museums and things like that. Um, so basic needs, food, shelter. Uh, it needs to have nature as one of those top three. When you go to a new town, that you don't know anything about, you go to Yelp, and it tells you where you where the local nature is. Uh, you know how long the trails are. Where you know what are the hours? When you know what kind of activities do they have? Uh, once we have nature on Yelp as one of the top three things when you go to a new place, then we'll be getting back into what what Lou was saying. You know, including uh, nature back into our Maybe there's another app that I should be talking about. Besides Yelp, I don't know. Okay, uh, so again, folks like me who have been doing this for a long time, uh, when you look at this graphic, um, it's talking about why nature is good for you and, and all the areas that nature is good for you. And, um, you know, spending time in nature is, is good for the planet. When I, that's been my goal for many years, sharing nature with families and children and adults and getting a, connect, connecting them with nature so that they appreciate it and they um, want to protect it. Um, but like I said, studies are coming out. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of science right now that's going on to help us understand a little bit more why nature is good for us in other ways. Uh, like for our bodies. Obviously, if you get outside, you're going to be more physically active. Um, you're going to be, um, uh, your, your body mass index, when you're more active, you're, you lose weight, your body mass index goes down. And um, I was reading about one study where they uh, tracked 2,000 students at a Head Start facility in the United States um, for the entire school year. And every day they got outside, uh, not just on the playground, but outside in nature, a nearby nature, just trails and trees and things like that. And uh, that led to a significant, and, and at the end of the year, track, tracking all 2,000 students, uh, they lost a significant amount of, of BMI points. Uh, and also a 42% reduction in obesity. Um, so that's just 37 minutes a day, and you know, great outcomes there. Um, myopia. Uh, they say if you are spend a lot of time outside early in life, uh, your chances of getting myopia, nearsightedness, uh, is decreased. And looking around this room, I, I see a lot of folks without glasses on. So good for you for being in nature when you're young. Um, uh, and, you know, we'll talk a lot more about some of these other um, 
benefits for our physical bodies and some of these benefits for our, uh, for our minds. Um, but uh, something else that I wanted to touch on before we get into that is that, uh, you know, there have been study after study on how physical activity has been, is good for folks getting, uh, you know, not just outside, but inside or outside. And um, now they're starting to do a little more studies to compare the two. Are there any extra benefits for doing your physical activity outside uh, compared to inside? And they have found some. Um, and they're still doing a lot of studies on this, but um, uh, there was a review of some literature uh, where they tried to, tried to determine that. If, are folks getting more out of being outdoors when they do um, their activities? And this is, uh, you know, participant self-reporting and, and, you know, they, the ones that spent uh, time exercising outside compared to the ones uh, that uh, exercised inside felt more revitalized and had more positive energy and a decrease in tension, confusion, anger, things like that. Um, so we'll have to keep an, our eye on those studies. You know, so, so what is it about nature? What are the, what, we're getting more and more evidence. You stick somebody outside, they're gonna reap some benefits. Um, but, but what is it? What is it about nature that, that is causing these benefits? And there is a lot of uh, studies going on right now uh, that is looking at this. Um, and, you know, the results are showing uh, a lot of benefits. Um, so, you know, the question is, well, is it the, you know, most people go outside and they enjoy the, the scenic beauty of, of the outdoors. Um, is it, are those sights calming, uh, reducing our depression, things like that? Is it the aromas? We all know that, you know, scents have a real impact on our brain. Uh, are they doing something beneficial to our brain and our body? Do, are the aromas outdoors uh, doing something beneficial to our brain? Is it the soothing colors you see outside that you don't see indoors very much? Is it the calming sounds, the, the breeze and the leaves or the, the, uh, the, the stream? Um, or is it fighting sides? Um, what are those? Well, it turns out that, you know, in addition to the things that we think are calming and, uh, and nice, uh, aromas and sounds of the natural environment, there are, there are all, also these things called phytoncides, which are airborne antimicrobial chemical compounds that plants and trees uh, have, they release, uh, that helps them fight off disease and, and harmful substance. It's, you know, their immune system. Um, so it helps plants and trees, but it also is something that when humans breathe in, you go outside and you breathe in these compounds, our brains respond. Um, and, you know, there's lots of different fighting sides, different compounds. Uh, some of them may stimulate our brains. Some of them may sedate our brains. Um, there's a lot of different effects. And this is what current studies are, are looking at, seeing what, what are we doing here? What are these, what are these doing to us? Um, interestingly, when I was doing my research, I came across uh, a section on aromatherapy where they're using essential oils from plants, basically using the phytocytes from different plants to uh, help us, um, you know, depending on the type of plant we're using in aromatherapy. And when I read this, I'm like, okay, I'm buying a diffuser and then buy some essential oils from different plants and see how that works for me. And, uh, and actually I bought it for the office. Um, and I, you know, I bought some rosemary and lemons and put it in the front office where the staff is just to, See how that does. And some peppermint, because that improves performance. <laughs> Stay away from the lavender and rose. Didn't want to sedate anybody. <laughs> if somebody's going to fall asleep at work, it's not going to be because I sedated them with aromatherapy. Um, and I really wanted the jasmine to work. Um, this jasmine, jasmine doesn't put you to sleep. It's just, pro it's just supposed to promote your sleep quality. Uh, unfortunately, it just gave me a headache. So I never really found out. <laughs> help me or not. Uh, but I'm, uh, you know, 
encourage you to try it out if 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 you're having trouble falling asleep you know try some lemon or rose or if you're having trouble staying awake uh, in your office try some rosemary lemons okay um, so current studies have found um, time in nature is proven to improve immunity um, we are looking at reduce, reduced risk of heart attacks and, re and a reduction in breathing ailments. Um, so for your physical body, uh, we'll talk more about your brain in a minute, but uh, for your body, there, these are some things that studies are showing uh, are happening right now. Let's look at those. Um, so immunity. Uh, so you know, the white, white blood cells are the cells that uh, you know, protect us. They're also called NK cells, nat NK cells, natural killer cells. Um, and uh, being immersed in nature co coincides with an increase in the activity and the type of white blood cells that, um, you know, kill tumors, uh, kill tumor cells, and, and cells infected with viruses in our body. In, uh, in one study that was done in Japan, um, they took a group of folks out uh, for a three-day, two-night forest bathing trip. Has anybody heard of forest bathing? Okay. All right, we'll talk more about that later. But it doesn't have anything to do with taking a clothes off and going into the forest. It has to do with spending intentional time in the forest for the benefit, the health benefits that it provides. Um, and in some of the Asian countries, Japan and um, uh, Korea, the, they have really embraced this activity for uh, the restorative and health properties that it provides. Anyway, uh, back to the study. Um, uh, one three-day, two-night forest bathing trip, uh, NK cell cells were um, uh, tested, and uh, they showed an increase in NK cells even 30 days after uh, the trip was over. So it boosted their, their immunity while they were out there and shortly after they were out there and then additionally for up to 30 days after they were out there. Um, so just getting outside can help your immunity. And uh, the Japanese researchers are currently working on uh, whether you know, being out on these forest bathing trips can help prevent certain kinds of cancer. So that's, that's the cutting edge of the um, research that's happening right now. Um, Reduces the risk of heart attack. So spending time in nature, fighting sites have been shown to increase the body's adipodectin levels. Uh, and these are anti-inflammatory on blood vessels. And that has been shown to decrease uh, the rate of heart attacks. And then uh, breathing ailments. Um, here's a really interesting study. Uh, again, the um, Force there has been shown to reduce uh, inflammation in the lungs and reducing problems like asthma and COPD. Um, New Zealand did a study from 1998 to 2016 on 50,000 New Zealand kids. Uh, and they found um, that not only time in nature, but if the vegetation in their communities are if there's a vegetation diversity in their community, different kinds of plants, not just you know, your regular uh, things you see in your community, are very protective against asthma. Okay, what about your brain? How's everybody doing? <laughs> We're not in nature. I'm worried about your brains. <laughs> okay? Okay. Um, maybe just talking about it is helpful. Uh, so studies now are being done on how uh, time in nature reduces stress. I think we could probably all relate to that. Um, fights depression. Uh, really strong evidence on how it reduces ADHD symptoms in kids. Um, and attention, relieving attention fatigue, which I'm asking of you right now. So how, how do we do that? Um, so stress, here's a major study, again by the Japanese, uh, where they took a group out 
into nature, same thing, forex bathing for you know a few days, and they studied the, the parameters that you think of when you think of stress, and this includes uh, pulse rate, uh, heart rate variability, uh, blood pressure, cortisol levels. Cortisol is the hormone that's uh, created when you're under stress, so it's known as the stress hormone. Um, and heart rate variability is a measure of your heart rate, how it returns or is raised, um, you know, based on uh, stressful events. Uh, so studying how it returns back to its normal uh, beat is, uh, is a thing that uh, is a good parameter to study when you're looking at stress. Um, and they were really able to demonstrate with this group that they took outside that um, there were profound health benefits observed in these subjects. Across the board, all of these parameters um, were at optimal levels. Um, blood pressure, pulse rates, cortisol levels, and heart rates uh, were all better. And this, this is a group, this is a study where one group is outside, another group, similar uh, group, uh, in a city environment, and the, the group that was outside, remarkable, uh, um, their parameters, their measurements were a lot healthier. Uh, depression. This is an interesting study that I learned about recently um, by Stanford researchers. Uh, so they did a similar thing where they didn't um, immerse people in nature they just took them in 90 minutes walks. Um, so one group did 90 minutes in a park, natural area. Uh, one group did the uh, uh, high traffic urban setting and one did um, you know, just a, um, a non-urban uh, rural setting, but you know, uh, not, the, not the natural setting. And um, the interesting thing was that the, they showed a decreased activity in the region of the brain associated with key factors of depression, only in the group that spent 90 minutes uh, walking in the natural area. Um, and what, uh, what they are looking at in this study is would the uh, effect of nature, would it influence rumination? And rumination is, uh, for people folks that are depressed, it's the repetitive thought um, of focusing on negative aspects of yourself, um, which is a known, a known risk factor for depression. And uh, the, the participants that went on this 90 minute walk in the natural area showed lower uh, reduced uh, levels of rumination and lower neural activity in the area of the brain, which is the subgeneral uh, prefrontal cortex that shows uh, depression, you know, where depression is, um, compared to the ones that were in the urban and rural settings. <clears throat> uh, this is really interesting, ADHD symptoms. Um, so we know that you know children diagnosed with ADHD have harder times in school and um, the current uh, response to that is to dose them with Ritalin and see how that goes. Um, well, there's been a lot of studies on the effects of the outdoors on these kids and how uh, how that it, how that affects their attention. And oops, um, uh, there's. There's an older study that, that I've read, but I know there's been more since then, uh, where they did a similar thing to that last study, but with kids. Um, every day, one group of kids uh, did a walk in a park with trees and nature, and the other ones uh, were in residential areas or downtown areas, and there was a remarkable difference in the kids um, in, in their attention after the walk in nature. Uh, and now they're starting to talk about how uh, the, these positive effects of time in nature for these kids are comparable to the effects of real. 
So there's some promising studies there. Okay, attention, relieves attention fatigue. Uh, so let's say your attention is like a muscle. Um, the more you use it, the longer you use it, it's going to get fatigued and it's not going to work how you want it. Uh, so you need to give it a break. Uh, so if you're using your muscle to lift weights uh, and you say, oh boy, it's not working, I need to give it a break, and you, you go and do push-ups, that's not going to, that's not going to relieve your muscle. It's the same with attention. Uh, you know, you, you're working hard, you've got focused attention on a project you're working on, and you know, you get to your limits, and you say, I need a break. Well, uh, a lot of people will go to their phone or go watch something on a screen. Uh, that's not going to help. Um, so what, what's being looked at now to help with attention fatigue is attention restoration theory, which suggests that nature can help replenish our mental attention capacity uh, because according to ART, uh, interactions with nature only require effortless attention which can help give the brain a break from the direct attention that you're focusing on your project. And thus helps restore its cognitive functioning. So what is, the, what is this effortless attention? Um, well, there's a, a couple named Rachel and uh, Stephen Kaplan, they're eco-psychologists from the University of Michigan who've been looking at this for a long time. And uh, they believe that, that nature contains a calming stimuli. Uh, which he describes as soft fascinations. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, looking at clouds, moving through the sky, watching the water in a, in a stream, uh, watching the leaves, uh, you know, shimmering in the, in the wind, um, which are, you know, aesthetically pleasing natural elements, uh, which have the ability to hold our attention, but it's effortless. Uh, we're not straining ourselves. Uh, so this theory suggests that uh, experience in the natural environment doesn't uh, require direct focus, so we're, we're relaxing our brain, using effortless reflection, uh, and that allows you, your attention to uh, recover. Um, so when you're on a break, so here's an example. I, just had a conference with a bunch of other environmental educators who you would think would know better, right? Um, and we were at the Lead Lodge in uh, Nebraska City. It's the Arbor Day uh, Farm. Has anybody been there? Lead Lodge in Nebraska? It's amazing. It's really a beautiful old lodge. It's filled with all these um, uh, uh, poles of uh, Anyway, these big conifer trees, it's, it's really beautiful inside. And then outside, of course, it's forest because it's Arbor Day. Uh, wind trails going through it. And, um, and I'm thinking, great, this is going to be a great conference. Um, but the folks in charge really did not uh, leave any downtime schedule for getting outside and enjoying and getting the restorative uh, properties and, uh, you know, attention restoration theory. Nobody thought about that, so we plugged away, and um, and I think you know we could have done better work had we had some time outside and and uh, had our attention recovered. Um, but you, but as you can guess, uh, not just adults, but they're looking at this in kids, you know, in school situations as well. Um, you know, you've got kids focusing on schoolwork all day long, and we know. You know, they get outside, they get uh, recess breaks, because they're going to know that's restorative. Um, but now they're doing studies comparing, you know, uh, and Italy did this really amazing study comparing the kids that just get outside and play on the playground and things like that, as opposed to kids who um, got to spend some time in a natural area at their school grounds. And, um, and didn't notice that the pupils uh, who got to spend time in the natural area, they're attention was restored and they were better, uh, you know, after the break, they performed better. Um, 
so that's just a, you know just a small sample of some of the things that are going on uh, the studies that people are doing to look at you know what's going on with nature how is it affecting people could we be doing more could could we be um, benefiting even more than, than we are by spending more time in nature um, and you know what I think you know we hear a lot from our doctors and from the medical community about the importance of our lifestyle choices in our health uh, things like exercise diet sleep uh, avoiding stress and how that helps our, our, uh, our wellness um, but I think you know it's starting to look clearer and clearer like there's a there's a growing body of evidence of scientific studies that clearly validate the health supportive effects of nature exposure um, and this is uh, Park RX America. This is a website uh, that's trying to encourage this. It's trying to get physicians in on this. And um, if you're a physician, you can go in um, uh, on the website. Uh, it's it's kind of new, so folks are still entering uh, local parks and things that physicians could go to, look them up in their area and then uh, prescribe them to patients. Uh, you know, they can look at what's, what's in the park, how many trails, things like that, and talk about it with their patients and see if they'd be comfortable going to this park as a prescription. Spend, and you know, they can write a prescription that says, three times a day, spend 20 minutes on the trails of this park. Um, and that's, that's what this website is. And, Interestingly, if you go to this website and you look up parks in Kansas, you'll only find one. It's still a nature center. Um, but don't worry, it's new, and I'm sure somebody will put Chisholm, Chisholm Creek in there very soon, because we all know how, how great this park is. Um, so that's, that's the next step in this, I think, is getting the, uh, the medical community involved uh, in ways to get more folks out, outdoors and you know getting a prescription I mean who doesn't fill out their prescription when they get a prescription from their doctor hopefully more folks will be getting prescribed nature um, okay and I just wanted to share some of the my resources that uh, that I use to you know find these studies and things like that uh, my favorite book that I've read in the last few years is called the nature fix um, this, is, this book is where I came, came across many of the studies that I talked about. What's really cool about this book is that the author, Florence Williams, uh, goes and finds those researchers after they've done their study and then has them create their study on her. So she uh, you know, spends the three day, two nights out in the woods and they scan her brain and, and see you know, what happens. Um, so that's a really, really fun book. Um, uh, Your Brain on Nature is uh, another book that I've read recently that uh, really talks about the science behind uh, the fighting sides and their effects on the brain and, and just a lot of interesting brain stuff in there. Uh, we talked about Last Child in the Woods, um, but this really was the first book that, um, that made people go, oh, this might be important, and how nature exposure to kids and, and, you know, might just really be important. Um, and then the nature principle, which we talked about, is the follow-up and uh, war warning the do uh, about adults and, and too much time with technology. Um, this podcast, Brain on Nature, uh, is something I just found recently. Um, but if, you, if you're into podcasts, I would really recommend it. Um, it uh, documents this woman who suffered a traumatic brain injury. Um, and was just having a really hard time, and and it documents her recovery uh, and how she used nature, uh, and how nature helped her uh, recover quick more quickly. And then uh, Parks RA is the, the website I was just talking about. Um, uh, in addition to having a place where physicians can prescribe uh, nature, it also has a lot of resources and links to a, a lot of research that's going on um, to, to prove the benefits of nature and 
why physicians, you know, physicians need to be convinced. Um, they don't prescribe something unless it's been um, approved, it's gone through many tests and it's been vetted and the FDA approves it. They don't prescribe that. So this website really wants to get as much information out there for his physicians so they can feel comfortable prescribing nature. Okay, so that's uh, what I wanted to share with you about your brain on nature and the positive effects of uh, nature on you and your brain and your body. Um, so now I'd like to share a few things that are happening at the Dillon Nature Center. Um, you know, it's not that far up. Uh, you might need to come visit us. Um, we have an event kind of built around this, this concept of uh, 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 nature being healthy for you. It's called Nature Therapy Day. Um, we've been doing it for a few years now. We do it twice a year. It's coming up May 7th, uh, if anybody wants to join us. And, um, uh, you know, we have, there you'll, you'll see a healthcare professional come out and talk a little bit about uh, education of, of uh, nature and uh, its effects on your brain and stuff. Um, and we have uh, sponsors, uh, both um, Horizons, which is our mental health uh, center in, in Hutch and our regional, regional uh, staff from the regional medical center come out and talk to people about that. Um, and then we just do, you know, great wellness activities, but we do it outdoors in the woods. Uh, yoga, Tai Chi, we do kids yoga, um, and uh, guided meditation. What a great place to do uh, some meditation out in the woods. I do a forest bathing walk, um, which I mentioned before. Everybody's clothes stays on, but we um, just kind of walk intentionally through the woods. And it's just, uh, just a nice, slow, um, reaping the benefits of being out in the woods. And then, of course, food trucks. Who doesn't know the health benefits of food trucks? <laughs> um, but actually, we have a pretty cool uh, food truck called Belle's Berry Bowl. And she does smoothies and fruit bowls, and they're really healthy. <laughs> so it's perfect for this event. Um, so that event's coming up. It's uh, Again, it's on May uh, 7th, so it's not too far away. Um, other events I think you folks might be interested in, uh, we do a plant sale. It's a fundraiser for the Nature Center. Um, but it's, it's a pretty good one. Um, it's called the Lesser Known Lovelies Plant Sale because uh, not only are they plants that are beautiful and hardy, but they're also plants you won't find in local nurseries. Um, so if you're looking to fill your garden with some really good plants, um, we're doing that on the 22nd, 23rd of April. Um, summer camp, we have the best uh, summer activities. We do adventure camp. Kids do uh, canoeing, archery, fishing, crafts, uh, nature hikes. And they're outside, immersed in nature the whole time. It's a week-long camp, a uh, week-long day camp. Um, and uh, we do 60 kids a week, and we fill that up all summer. It's just amazing. It's a tradition, and um, we now have uh, kids whose parents did it, and they insist that their kids do it. Um, so, if anybody's got any school age, K through uh, sixth graders that you want to uh, send up north for a little while, that's a pretty awesome camp. Um, some other events we do, uh, we've been doing this Foodie Fest for the last few years. Um, all activities based around uh, food. We have a cook-off. Uh, we have vendors, uh, farmers market type vendors come out and sell their goods. Uh, you can see the kids racing their vegetable racer that they build themselves out of probably zucchini mostly. Um, and then tied with that weekend we do another fundraiser called uh, Farm to Dinner Table. I mean Farm to Table Dinner. Um, that's coming up in August on Friday. Friday, August 5th. Uh, that's another fundraising event. Um, we get local chefs. Uh, they use all local, locally sourced produce and meats to put together some meals. And um, we 
go. So in case you're interested, we had local local beer in line. Um, so it's a real fun night. And then lastly, um, we have a little kid event called Spook Walk. It's geared for the younger kids. Um, we partner with uh, our local community theater, our family community theater in Hutch, uh, where we have actors out on the trail and the kids come up to them and um, do, a little, do a little scene and it's really fun. Uh, and then I know you do your bird walks here on the second Saturday. Um, I do a bird walk at the Nature Center, at the Dillon Nature Center on the fourth Saturday. So if you um, have ever wanted to come up and see what's going on in our little forest at the Dillon Nature Center, uh, bird-wise, uh, come join me for that. And uh, that is my presentation. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. <laughs> yes? What time did your bird walk? Uh, they start at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock in the parking lot. Yeah. Do you guys do the same time yep. all year long? Yep. Yeah. I've tried doing it later in the winter and it just confuses people. Are you doing parking lot or at the visitor center? He said 8 o'clock at the parking lot. Oh, 8 o'clock at the visitor center. Okay. That's where we do. Okay. Uh, it's only... We've got maybe 10 minutes left of daylight. I don't know. Can we get that? Get to the woodcock by then? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. And uh, oh, I brought the books that I was talking about. If anybody wants to page through them and take a look, and and if you have any questions, I'll stick around for a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. Thanks for coming out. See you.